I am so happy that you're able to join us for this extended interview. Make sure to visit theoffbeatlife.com. Again, that's theoffbeatlife.com to get more killer resources. Hey everyone, thank you so much for coming back for our extended interview. I'm here with Ingrid and she's going to share with us how she's created strategies that will be great to start a successful business. Hey Ingrid, how are you? Hi Debbie, I'm good. It's good to be here. Thank you so much for being here. So before we get your tips and tricks, can you tell us a little bit more about you and why you live in Offbeat Life? Yeah, so I'm a global leader. Really, I would say I'm a self-made leader because I didn't think I was a leader when I was younger. Um, But I started a movement when I was about 20 years old and a junior in, in college, an idea about empowering women. And, and you know, we started with a five-day annual summit and we've grown that summit to doing it, you know, over 10 national and global summits, you know, since then. So we've grown from, you know, starting from two countries to over 150. So that's kind of, I've been an entrepreneur since I was very little. I used to sell candy to my neighbors and then I would find who would eat the most and just try and sell that person the most. So I was very particular about who my target audience was when it come to it came to selling candy. Also for my, when I was, I would say in third, fourth grade, I started selling jewelry. So I would make my own jewelry and sell it at school until I got obviously caught and I wasn't allowed to do that. But I always sold it to family and people that knew me. And so I feel like I've always had a very entrepreneurial background and I come from a family of entrepreneurs and founders. And so it's just kind of in my blood. It was never a woman that did it. So I think I'm the first in the family to be a female entrepreneur uh, which is exciting because my grandmas and my mom, they were entrepreneurs, but they just were never able to fully execute it. And then so a few months ago, I started my digital agency. So I was able to go full time on entrepreneurship and pair my passion project, which is called Women Ambassadors Forum and my creative agency, which is called Align Creative Agency. That is such a great journey that you've been on. And you're right, you pretty much taught yourself how to do this. And you had nothing. And now look at this, you have a whole slew of people who are behind you. And now you've started another company. That's why you are the best person to talk to about this. (laughs) Now, Ingrid, when you are thinking about a business that you want to start, and you've started two already, How do you take the first step? What is your first strategy when you want to launch something? Yeah, so definitely I've had many, many ideas. I always try and make sure that I I will go a little bit further in the process with some ideas. And then I realize that I am not ready for that idea. So I stop it. But I would say like, for example, with a movement. So if you're trying to grow a movement, and you're trying to reach other countries, it's really important that you start creating allies in other countries. So if you have, you know, like my organization was for women. So I started to partner with women-led organizations in other countries that would help promote my own organization. But I think in terms of strategy in general with anything that I do is I always first look at what I want to sell and who my target audience is. So who am I selling and what am I selling? And I think that really narrows down what the business will be. I never create a business plan, which is probably my fault, you know? So I always just kind of go for it. And I it, there, there is a business plan, but I don't do it the traditional way. And a lot of entrepreneurs witness that. Like they don't do it the un- entrepreneurial way. So for me, it's once I figure out what the idea is, I go on Google and I start researching if other companies have it or if there's something in the market that exists in, you know, in my idea. So if there's a very, very strong brand that already does what I do, it could be intimidating, but it's always a matter of figuring out how you can be better. So you can really always start a company that already exists, but it's just a matter of 
figuring out, and I know I, I'm repeating myself, but it's important. Like you just have to know how your product is going to be better. And that could be by cost, that could be by quality, that could be by, you know, service. I mean, there's so many things that can make you better, right? So if you look at Uber, I actually had a business plan. My car was going to be called Flash. And that was when I was a freshman in college. And this is before Uber. So I would have been a billionaire by then, <laughs> by now. <laughs> but I had the idea and my dad's like, no, I don't think that would work. You know, <laughs> So I think that's always important that you don't listen to people that are close to you. Because what happens is like for me... I'm always putting myself in situations that are uncomfortable and that are forcing me to grow. I'm never just kind of laying back. It's always like on this spotlight, right? Like I'm constantly on the spotlight. So you have to look at when you get feedback, you get feedback from people that are on the spotlight with you. Because if they're not willing to risk, you're listening to people that are holding you back. And that's what happens to a lot of entrepreneurs. I actually didn't grow my movement to be a business right away because, you know, I had people that were like, I don't think that's a good, smart idea. Like, I don't think that's a business. Like, how are you going to monetize from that? So I feel like I'm still struggling to like overcome that, but it's definitely more of like a mindset. So then it depends what you're doing. So if you're doing a service-based business, if you're doing a product-based business, if you're doing, I mean, everything is really different, but I think As first steps is making sure that you have a name that you relate to that's important. So an example of a name. So you think about my movement, Women Ambassadors Forum. I never thought, and this was kind of like a great marketing strategy, but I didn't know it back then. So ambassadors are called women that are ambassadors are women that are leading their countries. They are women that represent and fight for equality. They are women that are given a title of respect. So what happened is like, without me knowing my organization was automatically put into that category of ambassadors, of women that are respected, of women that are leaders in their country. So if you think about it, that was really smart because <laughs> I started to get women that are real ambassadors from countries and their countries would recommend them to come to my forum, which is the craziest part. So that is, I think, very important. The name is important because it's what it has to be simple. It has to be attractive. You know, the branding is important that you pick the colors that are, you know, are going to make the most sense to the product that you're selling. And then, for example, with my digital agency, I called it Aligned Creative Agency. So that day when I chose the name, I locked myself in my apartment and I didn't leave until I came up with a name. And so I'm driving, I left for like food or something. And so I'm driving and I see a place or this car had this word called Aligned. And I didn't realize like most of my conversations, most of the times I talk to people that are building businesses, they always mention the world, the word aligned, like, oh yeah, when I'm aligned, like, oh, I was so aligned. So I just, I was like, I looked up agencies and, you know, I came up with aligned creative agency and now it's this super fun marketing strategy where with all my clients, I'm like, oh, welcome. Like you're now aligned, you know, or like. Let us help you be aligned, you know? So it's like a fun marketing. Really, it just came from me really digging like deep in myself and into Google, of course. So that's kind of the process. You definitely want to trademark your names. I think it's really important. I definitely think trademarking once you are already a business or even before, it depends again what your business is. And then so you find a name, you buy your URL, and then so once you have your URL, you can start building a website. But guess what? You don't have to do it because my team can do it for you. (laughs) (laughs) You you have all of the strategies that already need to be in place. But that's, honestly, that's really what's so important is like, everything can get really overwhelming if you try to do everything at once. But if you just have a list and then take it step by step, or you have an agency or somebody else help you, it's not as overwhelming as 
it really looks. <laughs> it just takes time to do it, right? <laughs> exactly. And I think a lot of people too, like, if you're not good at something, just let the experts do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? absolutely. You, you don't have to be good at everything. Like, I remember there's some things I'm just literally not good at, right? And I, I have to accept that and acknowledge that truth and just be able to move on and find people that enjoy that process. And I think a lot of times when you start a business and that may be the number one problem is that you start getting caught up in, in different work and in, in work that you're not passionate about because every business has so much, right? So, you know, I see friends of mine that are entrepreneurs and are kind of being suffocated by the work that they're doing because they like to do the bigger thing, the creative connection, like connect, connecting with people, um, thinking about partnerships, like, and, and when you're creating, building a business, you're doing everything. So you are everything. So it's so important that you, you analyze that first, even before you go into the business of like, how is that going to look like? Like, am I going to get, you know, an outsourced person to help me with this? So then that means that I have to train that person, right? I have to train that person to know how to do that. And so there's this entire dynamic of things of like, how the hell am I going to build the business without having to work on it? Yeah. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, I told my dad that and he's like, what do you mean you don't want to work on it? <laughs> he's like, I don't get it. <laughs> you, know, you know, it's funny, Ingrid, because I put a title on myself. I always say I'm the lazy entrepreneur because <laughs> I just want to think about the ideas and have people who can actually implement them do it for me. <laughs> Well, that's fine. I mean, if you can find someone that can do that for you, then that's great. You know what I mean? Exactly. I think there's, uh, you know, there's this, I can't remember who wrote that book, but like a five hour week or the four oh, hour. Oh, Tim Ferriss. Yes. Yeah. So it, it, it's all about establishing strategies where like things are running. Like for me, I, you know, I have an amazing team. So it's like, I bring in the clients that project management, don't get me wrong, is really hard. And so you bring in people and they do the work. So then while they're working on the client's work, you can work on your passion project. And then so vice versa. So for me, at the end of the day, it was a matter of just knowing that I had to do, I just had to make a living and then build my dream and then make it work for both. Right. So at the end of the day, it's like, what is going to make you happy, right? Because sometimes you need another job to make your entrepreneurial thing work until you make smart investments, mm-hmm. right? But there's so many things. Yeah. So what would you say is the secret sauce to creating a successful business and brand? I think, honestly, there's so many different sauces <laughs> that you have <laughs> to add. But definitely, I would say is... I would say, first of all, you have to be passionate about what you're building, because if you're going to raise capital, you know, raise capital, find investors, if you're going to need um, other people to join your cause, you have to believe in it. And that's what I've realized, like with the women's ambassadors, like I suddenly and I never like I still remember so clearly the first person that shared a post about us on Facebook and the first person that posted and tagged us and the reaction of the women when they would get accepted into a program. I can remember them so vividly. And for me, that's what drives me, right? It's knowing that now I get some, you know, applications from all over the world every day of women wanting to work with me. And so there's also this other side that's a very dark side where you, you should be very careful who you bring in and you should be very careful with making sure that your friends are not involved to a certain extent because you I've lost a lot of friends, a lot of them, even some of my closest and friendship breakups are the worst. And so you you just have to know that you you have to really it also be in this lonely journey of like figuring it out um But I think the secret sauce is just really holding on to that passion and and having a goal in mind. So 
what is your financial goals look like? What, you know, finance wise, your budgeting, like, how are you going to do that? Like, are you going to cut costs on your living expenses until you make more that you can't like, is it worth it to hire someone and pay their 401k? Or should you just offshore, you know, so there's so many things, but I think definitely passion breaks all of it. That is such a great lesson to learn because at the end of the day, if you don't have that passion, then it's not going to go well. And you're definitely going to quit sooner or later. Yeah, for sure. It's like a marriage. I, I almost feel like it's like a marriage. Like if you don't love the idea that much, like you're going to hate it at the end of the day, right? Like you're just not going to make it. <laughs> you know, there is so much that comes into with entrepreneurship, like so much. And it could be really fun and it could be really frustrating. But I think for me, like now I'm at a point where like, I don't get stressed, you know, stressed out. I don't worry a lot. And it, it's, it's, I like that. I like being in that position where I'm probably going to start feeling a little bit more stressed out in like a few days because of my fundraising for my next forum. But it's, it's just knowing how much you can take. Because what I realized is that when I was organizing forums um, in another city, because I organized two forums being in another city. And so I had to have a team locally. So now with me, imagine, for me, it was way harder because I had to motivate a team without paying them. How the hell do you do that? (laughs) A team without paying them. This has been five years of my life, right? Now I can pay people. Yeah. But before I couldn't. That's crazy. And even now it's like hard because I'm like, but you know, aren't you passionate enough about this? Like, you know, but so that was hard because I didn't know that the level of stress And the level of responsibility that I can take is a lot, a lot. And people can't take that. So as a business owner, you have to know that when you give that kind of responsibility to someone else, like it may break them. And that happened to me with other forums. Like I would have people break in the middle of the process and be like, I can't do this. Like I'm having, you know, depression, I'm having anxiety and that. And it's not fair for them, right? So it's just a matter of, you know, and I don't want to scare people because entrepreneurship is a really beautiful journey. And I can't tell you how many times I've cried of joy and gratitude. And, and <laughs> I've, I know that I'm like wearing you to be like that emotions. Like you can't buy that. Yeah, it's not an easy journey, but it's definitely rewarding for you to do that. Oh, my goodness. Thank you so much, Ingrid, for joining us today. I really appreciate all of the tips that you gave us. If our listeners want to know more about you, where can they find you? Yeah, so you can add me on Instagram, which is Ingrid Harp underscore. And then you can also look up our website for both companies. So my ambassador's um, website is womenaf.org. And then for my creative agency, it's alignedcreativeagency.com. Perfect. Thank you so much, Ingrid, for being here with us. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I hope you enjoyed this extended interview with Ingrid. Make sure to visit theoffbeatlife.com. Again, that's theoffbeatlife.com, where she shares how she was able to empower women to pursue their career goals. Thanks for joining me on this extended interview. Don't forget to subscribe and leave a review on iTunes. We can also chat some more on Facebook at The OB Life. I'll talk to you soon.